Welcome to class 3 in the measure theory series for applied research. In this video I will introduce measures and measure spaces. Measures are functions. Measures are used on measurable spaces to create measure spaces. Once the measure is added to a measurable space, it is a measure space. We made a set of sets from an old domain that contained elements of interest. We did that because we were also interested in combinations of those elements, and especially interested in using a function to assign values to those combinations of elements. So the measurable space needs a function. Now that we've created a new useful domain, we need to make use of this new domain and assign numbers to the elements of the new domain with a function called a measure. The measure is represented with this Greek symbol, mu. Measures are applied to the sigma algebra generated domain in the measurable spaces. Every function needs a domain and a range, and the same is true for the measure. Its domain is the sigma algebra in the measurable space, and its range is the real line. For the function called a measure, the domain is the sigma algebra, the range is the real line, and the measure has its own set of rules. And the rules are, one, a measure assigns to each set in a sigma algebra a number on the non-negative real line. That number can be zero, but it's just not allowed to be negative. Two, the empty set, which is found in every sigma algebra, is assigned the number zero. And three, for sets that have no overlap, these are called disjoint sets, a measure assigns to the union of these disjoint sets the sum of the number assigned to the individual sets. As you can see in this sigma algebra domain here, A, there is no overlap between sets A and set B. So if the measure assigns the value 5 to set A and the measure assigns the value 10 to set B, then the union of A and B is 5 plus 10 or 15. Since the union of A and B must be in the sigma algebra, then you know that the value for that element assigned by the measure is the sum of the value for the elements set A and set B assigned by the measure. Here's the nomenclature. A measurable space is the original domain and the new domain built using sigma algebra rules. A measure is the function applied to the sigma algebra created and maps the sigma algebra to the real line. A measure space is a measurable space connected to a specific measure. Say you have a region like upstate New York or Southern California or the Georgia Swamp. Let's make it simple and call it Region 1. And let's say you have these hospitals in Region 1. So region one is like what we've been calling set S, the original domain, and each of the hospitals is an element in this set. Then you create a sigma algebra so that you can examine functions of groups or elements of set S. Let's just make the sigma algebra the power set of region one. And remember that the power set is every possible set from every possible combination of elements in set S. So in this case, it's 2 to the 9, or 512 elements, or sets. Since I do not have space to depict all of them, I will just depict these. For the sake of illustrating the points I want to make, let's just say these particular elements contain the hospital groupings we happen to be interested in. So far, we have a measurable space. The original domain is region 1, and the sigma algebra we have is its power set. What about the measure? Suppose that we want to know the number of staffed beds the hospitals have. Then the power set will allow us to also know the number of staffed beds in different communities within the region, 
or the number of staffed beds at all the teaching hospitals in the region, or the number of staffed beds at the Catholic hospitals in the region. Because every possible combination of hospitals is in the power set. But you could always just make a sigma algebra with the sets that you're interested in by starting with just those sets. So in these cases, the measure is a function that assigns the number of staffed beds to every set in the power set. So in total, if you add up all the beds in the region, we have the measure on that set, region 1, which is 2,800. You can pause the video if you want to check these calculations for yourself and make sure you understand what's being done. So the unit sets are in the power set, so the measure on the set hospital A is 150. The measure on the set hospital A, hospital B is equal to the measure on the set hospital A plus the measure on hospital B, which is 500. The measure on the set alpha, which includes hospitals A, C, and E, equals 600. For the measure on the union of sets delta and lambda, it is important to note that these two sets are disjoint. Delta and lambda, there is no overlap between them. The union includes hospitals G, I, and H, and equals 1,000. And the measure on the intersection of sets theta and beta, this is just hospital D, equals 270. The measure on the empty set, which includes no hospitals, equals 0. Remember, every set contains the empty set. A measure space has three useful properties. This slide depicts the first one. If the Springfield General Hospital is a subset of set lambda, then the measure of Springfield General Hospital will be of a lesser value than the measure of set lambda. Or it could be of an equal value if the subset has the same elements as the whole set. Since the measure on set lambda equals the measure on hospital I plus the measure on Springfield General, the measure on set lambda must be bigger than the measure on Springfield General by the amount of the value that is the measure on hospital I. The measure on set lambda is 780, and the measure on Springfield General is 420. So you can see that the measure of set lambda is greater than the measure of Springfield General. Also, set delta shows you a case where hospital G is a subset, and the value of the measure on set delta equals the value on the measure on the element, hospital G. This slide depicts the second useful property, the measure of the union of sets beta and theta. Notice that sets beta and theta do overlap. They are not disjoint, so we cannot use the rule we learned before. This is what the union of sets beta and theta looks like. The union just contains hospitals B, D, and F. A set does not have the same element in it more than once. So in this case, the union is not the sum. Otherwise, you would count hospital D twice. The measure of the union of sets beta and theta equals the measure of set beta plus the measure of set theta, subtracting out the measure for the intersection of sets beta and theta, which is hospital D. So when you're deriving the measure of a union of sets that do overlap, that are not disjoint, do not double count elements that are in multiple sets. You cannot have the same element in more than once. So the measure for the set beta is really the measure for hospital B plus hospital D. 
plus the measure for hospital D. And the measure for set theta is really the measure for hospital D plus the measure for hospital F. And the overlap or intersection is hospital D. And as you can see in this slide, hospital D was double counted. But remember, there's only one hospital D in the union, so it needs to be subtracted out. And then you get the proper measure, which is the sum of the measures for hospital B, hospital D, and hospital F. Now say, for example, you had a set gamma in here. And set gamma contained hospitals C, E, D, and F. What would you have to subtract out if you took the union of sets beta, theta, and gamma? You would have to subtract out hospital D two times and subtract out hospital F one time. This slide depicts the third and last useful property of measures. The measure of the union of all the sets in region 1 is less than the sum of the measure on each of the sets in region 1. The inequality comes from the very property we just talked about with unions. On the left hand side with the union, the measure of Hell's Pass Hospital is only counted one time. Whereas on the right hand side with the summation, the measure of Hell's Pass Hospital is added two times. It is counted with the measure of the set theta and with the measure of the set beta. So the summation will be larger than the union of sets if there is overlap. Otherwise, if there's no overlap or the measure on an overlapping element equals zero, then they'll be equivalent. Okay, so we have now covered measures and measure spaces. If you liked this presentation on measure theory, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to find all the videos on measure theory. And if you have any questions, criticisms, or comments, just leave a comment below. Thank you for watching this video.